Okay, I'm going to show you how to install this red dot site for your Ohm Tech Polar. Uh, if you don't have one already, you can get one at the Mass Effect store. The link will be in the video. To install this, you're going to need a small flathead screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, a 7mm wrench, or an adjustable wrench. I'll provide this full assembly, pre-assembled, and uh, these zip ties here. And then let me give you a quick walkthrough of what you're looking at here. So this red laser here will hit the mirror and bounce off in that direction. Your CO2 laser will go right through the mirror. So it's a special type of mirror that'll bounce the red light from one side and allow the CO2 wavelength from the other. And then this black, this black square here will, will catch a little bit of the back scatter from the CO2 laser just so it doesn't damage anything inadvertently. The power loss is pretty minimal though, it should be roughly around 1%, uh, but a teeny bit of that beam is going to reflect back over here. And then this custom assembly for the Ohmtech Polar has these grub screws in the back so you can tighten it down uh, to your y-axis. It's got a built-in cord channel here to keep that cord from getting in the way of the laser beam. Um, I have pre-measured uh, a pretty good distance here between this drag chain and this unit here so you get a good amount of clearance. And then this drag chain sort of weighs down the cable and keeps it uh, manageable. And I've got this cable clip tie on here already that should come on your assembly that holds it at, the, uh, at a good suitable length. You can always adjust it if you need to, but you shouldn't need to. And then at the end of this red dot site, you've got um, custom little pin connectors that'll plug nicely into your Ohmtech Polar's control board. So that way the laser will come on and off automatically when you switch the machine on and off. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and install it. Okay, to install it, the first thing I wanna do is remove this panel from the machine. So there's two screws holding it down. So I'm gonna first take those screws out using a Phillips screw, screwdriver. Now I'm gonna throw all my screws into a little cup right here. Uh, you can use whatever you have handy, but just something to keep them all consolidated so you don't lose them. Next, I need to disconnect two connectors from here. So I'm gonna pull this a little bit out of the way here just to give us some, some room. So the first thing you'll see is there is a little connector here with two black wires on it. I'm gonna just disconnect that. I'm gonna push this little clip in, pull them apart. The next connector is right here on the assembly for this LED. This one could be a little bit tricky to get out, but basically you're gonna just pop this out and then I'm gonna just gently lift up the edge here. And you'll see that this connector actually goes through a hole. So I'm gonna feed it through the hole to get it out of the way here. Now to pull this panel up, it's caught on the edge of the, the frame of the machine or the body of the machine. So I'm gonna reach my hand on the inside and I'm gonna push the wall of the machine outward a little bit to unlock two little clips. And then you'll see this pops right off. All right, so if you want to install one of these control panels and you haven't already installed it, this is probably a good project to pair with it because um, you're going to want to pull this panel off to install this, this controller and you're going to want to uh, get access to this control board. So uh, installing this while installing the red dot go sort of hand in hand. If you don't want to drill a hole in the side of your uh, polar like some of the other videos tell you to do, uh, here's a workaround option. There's an ethernet connector back here. If you're not using ethernet to control your machine, you can actually unplug it and feed the controller cable through that hole and then run the cable down here along this side. But now let's install the red dot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just slide this back all the way to the back position. All right, so in order to get access to that controller board, we're gonna pull this panel off the top and it's held in place by three screws. You have one down here, one over here, and one up here. All right, so this panel uh, lifts right up. It's just a solid sheet. So I'm gonna lift that up, take it out of the way. And now you'll see we've got access to this controller board. The red dot pointer has uh, two wires, a red wire and a black wire. So the red wire we want to plug into a 5 volt connection that isn't being used. The black wire we want to plug into a ground connection that isn't being used. So on my machine, this U axis is not being used at all. And we have 5 volts here for our red wire. And over here on CN6, we have a ground connection, GND, 
that we can use for our black wire. And if you're installing your control panel, now's a good time to do that because that plugs in down here. So it, in order to put the wires into here, you need to unscrew the sides to loosen up the connector and then push the connector into it. So uh, in order to do that, I'm gonna actually unscrew two screws that are holding this whole controller down, one back here and one over there. So I can lift it up and tilt it and get access to it. And if you need to, this PC USB cable in the bottom left corner is kind of in the way. So I'm going to unplug it uh, and then I'll plug it back in here when I'm done. Now what I'm going to do is tilt this whole control panel up so I can get access to those side screws. And so I'm going to go over to this five volt connector, stick my little flathead in there and loosen it up a bit. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for this ground connector. So unscrew that a little bit. Then I'm gonna set it back down and go get my laser assembly to get started. So for now, I'm just gonna set that assembly down out of the way and uh, I'm gonna put these connectors in. So now I'm going to take my red wire, I'm going to plug it into the 5 volts. Take my screwdriver over to the side here and tighten it down. Now I'm going to give it just a loose tug to make sure it's secure in there, and it is. So now I'm going to plug in my ground wire to the GND port. So black wire goes to GND. This one's a little trickier because it's tied down. But if you lift it just right, you can get access to it. Now I'm going to stick my screwdriver on the side and tighten it down. Give it a little bit of a tug, make sure it's secure. And we're good to go. So what I'm going to do now is set this board back down. I'm going to wiggle it around, make sure there's no wires stuck under it. If there's any wires stuck under it, I'm going to pull those out. Make sure it's nice and flat on the surface. I'm going to take those two long hex screws that were in there and reinstall those to hold this board down. All right, now I'm going to take my panel and I'm going to put it right back on uh, where we found it. So we've got the two screws at the bottom and one at the top. And so now... Uh, I'd like you to film from about right there. All right. So now what I'm going to do is you'll see this cord is tied on one side of this drag chain, but we have a hole on the other side of the drag chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a cable tie through this hole to hold it down in place over here by this screw. Now you have two options. One option is you can drill another hole here and put the cable tie through that. The other option is you can put it through this hole and just simply uh, neglect to put that screw back in. Now this isn't a structural piece. It's not going to really go anywhere. So I think it's okay. Uh, to omit it. So I'm just going to go ahead and secure it to there and then I'm going to reinstall this plate with only these two back screws. If you want to be more diligent though, uh, re-secure this plate with all three and then give yourself a new hole. So I'm going to run this cable tie through the hole on here. I'm going to lift up this plate, run it through here too. And I'm going to Pull that snug like that. And then take some scissors or clippers or something and just cut off that excess. All right, so now that we have this drag chain secured to this plate in this upper left corner, I'm going to feed this cable, the rest of this excess cable here loosely underneath the plate. And so it's just gonna rest on top of this control board here, but it's gonna be tucked out of the way. We don't, we don't want this excess cable here flopping around. So tuck it down underneath there, put this plate back in place, and I'll reinstall these two screws at the back. Okay, now that we've got the cable all set up and secure, we've got this plate uh, set down. What we're going to do is make sure that these grub screws aren't sticking out in this channel here. And this channel is going to sit over uh, this edge of the lip right here. So I like to position it uh, approximately where there's this cutout. I'll put this edge of this cutout up against the edge of this. 
Now the precise placement in this direction is not super critical, but uh, you're gonna get the best results if you're approximately in this region. So what I'm gonna do is just balance it over there. There's, there's, it's gonna be a tight fit by design. So to push it down, I'm gonna put my finger on this front plate here. The reason I don't wanna push on this back plate is because you see it's, it's used for adjustments. It's got these springs, it's got these screws. So we don't wanna mess with that. So I'm gonna push on this fixed plate right here. And I'm gonna just wiggle it left and right, push it down. And I wanna make sure it's completely flat against the surface here. So I'm gonna stick my nail behind here, or you can just look very closely if you've got good eyes. Stick my nail between both sides, make sure it's really flat. Now I can feel on this back side that I'm not all the way down. So I'm gonna to continue to rock this back and forth and get it really flat. And there, now I'm nice and flush, flat all the way down up against the surface here. I can feel the base plate completely flush. So I'm gonna pull this forward a little bit so it's easier to reach. And then I'm gonna use one of these hex keys to tighten these black grub screws to, to keep it secure on this rail. When you're tightening these, you don't want it you don't want to get extremely tight. You don't want to bite into the metal and put dents into that aluminum because this rail here is made out of a soft aluminum. So you want to get it tightened to a snug fit and then maybe just a hair beyond snug if you're okay putting a little dent in the back of it, which it should be fine. But don't go any deeper than that. Okay, now that we have the unit installed on there, what we're going to do is uh, roughly align the red laser beam to make sure it's hitting this mirror over here roughly in the center and going down. So I'm going to turn on the machine. All right, so I can see right here off the bat that this laser is, is way too high. So one thing I can do to get uh, some rough adjustments here is I can wiggle this beam up and down a little bit and see if that makes any difference. So I'm wiggling it up and down with my fingers. I'm going to push it down a little bit and that gets it closer to that mirror. So now that we have it closer to the mirror, what I want to do is use a seven millimeter wrench to turn these nuts here to wiggle this back plate enough to get that beam to go right in the middle of that mirror. So I see that I'm too high. So I'm actually going to um, squeeze squeeze these plates a little bit and see which direction it makes makes it go. And I'm learning that by squeezing it here, it's making the beam go down. So I want to take my wrench and tighten these two nuts a little bit to bring that beam down. All right, so I'm going to twist these nuts now and watch how that beam moves. And I'm seeing that it's going down onto that mirror. And another thing I can watch is I can look at where that red dot is hitting that lens. So if I see that red dot pretty close to the middle of the lens, I know I'm in pretty good shape. And in fact, that's probably good enough. I mean, I can sit here and tweak this all day if I want to get it right in the middle, um, but I think that's probably going to be good. Now, the red dot's clearly going down onto the surface. And what we don't yet know is whether it's going to be lined up with where the CO2 laser is going to hit. So what we need to do is do a brief burn test. So I have, I have one of these Ruida controllers here and I've got a pulse button that I can hit to send a brief, uh, a, a brief pulse. Alternatively, if you don't have that controller, that's fine. What you need to do is just go into light burn and create a tiny little line, just a little short line in line mode and use that to send a quick pulse. I have this back plate off and there's this wire here which connects to this interlock switch and your machine might even have a sticker up here that says interlock and what that's for is that when this sensor here doesn't detect the other uh, half of the sensor on this side it won't allow you to fire the beam it's a safety measure to make sure you don't fire the beam with this lid up so we have two options right now to test this out option one is you can go ahead and reinstall this panel and then if we need to make adjustments what you'll do is you'll reach back underneath here and you'll adjust these nuts from the inside. Now that's the safe way to do it. And if you're in doubt at all, go ahead and do it that way. 
but the alternative way is to turn off that interlock feature temporarily. So what I'm gonna do is go into Lightburn, I'm gonna go to Edit, I'm gonna click on Machine Settings, wait for it to load up those settings. I'm gonna scroll down until I see, there should be something about Vendor Settings. Here's the Vendor Settings, and it might be closed. When you open it, it might give you a warning saying, be careful, don't edit these things. So what I'm gonna do is go into Vendor Settings, find the Enable Door Open Protect, and I'm gonna turn this off. So when you go in, it'll probably say true. So it's protecting you from the open door. Turn that to false, click okay. It's gonna ask you if you wanna write these settings, yes. Now the machine is very unsafe and I can fire the pulse with the door open. So what I'm gonna do is put on my laser glasses, make sure nobody else is around, uh, make sure nothing is in the path of the beam. And I'm gonna come over to my controller and I'm going to click Pulse. So now we can zoom in and see uh, that that pulse is just a hair to the left of the laser beam. So what I wanna do now is come over here and figure out how do I adjust these nuts in order to move that beam slightly to the left. So again, to preview it, I'm going to come in here and just use my fingers and I'm going to squeeze parts of it just to see how that beam reacts. So if I squeeze in this direction, I see, oh, that brings my beam over there. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to tighten up these nuts a little bit to try to get that beam in the middle. Now, how precise you want to be here is completely up to you. Uh, for me, uh, I'm usually working with plus or minus a, a couple millimeters of wiggle room, so that's way more than close enough. But if you want it even uh, more precise, we'll go ahead and dial that in. Okay, so I'm going to start turning this wrench a little bit and see where it moves. And Oh, there we go. That's actually spot on. Okay, so our beam's all set up. All we need to do now is put the machine back together. But before I do that, what I want to do is I want to make sure that my cable management here, uh, that it's, it's in good shape. So I'm going to turn off the machine. Now what I want to do is pull this whole axis all the way to the front and I'm going to check for a couple of things. I want to make sure number one that this unit doesn't smash into the front of the machine and number two I want to watch this cable and this drag chain and make sure they're not getting caught up on anything. So I'm going to go back and forth a few times and I can tell uh, that that's that that's going to not be a problem. So now I'm going to go back to the back of the machine and check the same thing. Let's see that this isn't getting caught up on anything and that I have sufficient wiggle room here. Uh, if, for example, this drag chain was further up, you might find it getting caught on the edge of this, uh, this top plate right here. But it's sitting down there, staying on that, on that controller plate just fine. So I think we're in good shape. All right, to reinstall this, I'm gonna first come in here and I'm gonna gently set this down. I'm not gonna push it down yet. I'm just gonna gently set it there. And now I need to plug these cables back in. So first I'm gonna plug in uh, the easier one, this black cable. Put these two pieces together, click. Just kind of set them out of the way. Now this red one, I'm going to feed it through the hole on the back of this plate. It's going to feed up through there. Uh, look closely at the orientation of this connector. You'll see one side has a little line. You want to make sure the line on the connector lines up with the line on this socket. Go ahead and take this thing off and take a closer look if you need to. Uh, but I remember it goes this way, so I'm going to go ahead and stick that back in. Now, when I go to rest this in place, I may find that this gets caught up on that wire. If it does, I need to go in there and wiggle it out of the way or feed it through this, this hole in the machine. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just gently push this down a little bit until I feel it kind of clicking into place. And then I'm going to reach my hand back in and push on that wall to see if I can get those connectors to catch. Just like when we took it apart, uh, we're gonna push that wall out to give it a little bit of clearance. Now I can feel it catching on something here, so I'm gonna lift it back up and reassess. 
I suspect it's getting caught on this black and red cable. So I'm gonna pull that through a little bit more. Oh, there. So I pulled it through a little more and I felt this fall down. So now we're in much better shape. I'm gonna go ahead and wiggle this back plate into place. Make sure it's seated really well. And now I'm gonna reinstall those two screws with my Phillips head screwdriver. Now I'm gonna go back into Lightburn and I'm gonna turn that safety feature back on. I'm gonna say edit, machine settings, communication with controller fails because the machine is off. So let's turn the polar back on. So we're gonna read those controller settings again, go back down to vendor, enable door open protect, switch that back to true, click okay. Yes, let's write those to the machine. And we're safe again. All right, so far we've been doing this without the head of the, um, without this cover over the head of the laser, but it'll work just fine with the head of the laser too. You see the, the red beam will go through this hole over here and come down this way. So that's it. Now we're, we're installed, we're ready to go. Uh, no other uh, steps are necessary. Uh, from time to time, you may want to go in there while you're cleaning the other lenses and you'll want to clean this additional lens. So it's one extra step to your cleaning, but otherwise um, it should be pretty much maintenance free. So let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you run into any problems and uh, uh, I hope this is really useful for you.